In this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit, which is called a ring oscillator. And when you apply power, the lights just keep flashing like this, which is due to oscillation. So to quickly explain this circuit, to make a ring oscillator, you need an odd number of inverter circuits. In this case, we have three. And that's why you will notice there's three identical looking circuits there. So if you put a positive signal to the input, it will output a negative symbol. Usually it's represented by ones and zero. So if the input's one, if it's high, then the output will be zero, it'll be low. If the input is zero or low, the output will be one or high. So now you can kind of see the dilemma you got here. If the output here is positive, it'll come around. You'll notice this kind of looks like a ring to here. So that'll give this a positive, which makes the output here negative, which makes that input negative. The output will be positive, and then the output here will be negative. But if you remember when I started, this was positive. So these just go back and forth flipping back and forth trying to make the correct polarity but it'll always be a little bit off so now commonly the emitter is on the left side of the transistor when you're looking at the front the flat side in this case we're using the 2N3904 and our transistor the emitter is on the left base in the middle and then the collector is to the right so in the schematic the emitter is on the bottom we're doing that on the breadboard so the flat side will be pointing right so that the emitter is down to the bottom. So to begin with, we start with three transistors, which I have here. These are NPNs. The arrow's pointing out so you know they're NPNs. And I'm using the 2N3904 transistor. So hopefully here you can see the flat edge is to the right. And now that's the emitter down at the bottom there on the left as I just showed. And that comes right to ground, right to negative. And here's the, the ground symbol. You can also see the one up here. All three of them do that. So, since the changing of the inputs and outputs are usually really fast, we add capacitors to slow things down since the output will have to charge the capacitor before moving on, when, at which time it will discharge. So now for the capacitors, as you can see, one side connects directly to the collector as you should be able to see up here and then the other side goes right to ground if you remember the emitter also goes to ground so technically they're connected but uh, with the leads of the capacitor it's easier just to put the uh, positive side right to the capacitor negative side which in this case is an electrolytic you see the dashes comes to negative so all three of these transistors will have a capacitor just like this as you should notice in the, the schematics but I just have this one to sh show you for now to make it easier to to see it and I uh, should be able to see back there the uh, two pins coming right next to each other the collector of the transistor and the positive side of the capacitor so now I also need to mention that these are 470 microfarad capacitors they're fairly large capacitors. I use them often though and they make it easy to put this circuit together. So now the anode of the LED, that's the long lead, that's connected to the cathode of the transistor and the positive side of the capacitor. And so I have them lined up here. Here's a close-up to make it easier to see. Here's the long lead of the LED, the anode, comes to this jumper since there's no connection between the gap that connects to the collector of the transistor and to the long lead to the positive side of the capacitor so it'll sit this way and all three of them each one of these are connected just like that so now we come to the resistors we're going to start with the, the one on this side so as you can see it connects the positive to the anode of the LED which I just showed also connects to the collector of the transistor and the positive side of the capacitor so 
it comes uh, from positive here right up to the anode of the LED and that's for all three of these and as I just showed it connects across there so this is the resistor that brings the positive voltage in and this is a 470 ohm resistor every resistor is in the circuit and in this case that should protect uh, everything from too much current so now we come to the next resistor this is uh, also going to be 470 ohms as I said all of the ones all the resistors in the circuit are 470 ohms so this comes from the cathode the short lead of the LED so the voltage has a path through here to the base and so that's what this resistor is for is to connect this circuit to that circuit this is an inverter circuit and this is an inverter circuit this is where the connection is made so here's a close up the resistor is connected again this is 470 ohm every resistor in this circuit is 470 ohm comes from the cathode of the LED to the base of this transistor so when this LED is on that means voltage is coming through the resistor of the LED and that resistor to the base which turns this transistor on so when this transistor is on that will give an easier path for the voltage for this next one to come through the transistor to ground than through this LED so when this LED is on it's turning the transistor on and this transistor or this LED I mean will be off and then we do the same thing with the next circuit the cathode of the LED here has a resistor that comes to base so it's the same thing when this LED is on that allows voltage to come through here and turn the transistor on so that the voltage for this one has an easier path through the transistor than the LED so this LED will be off and now we move to a little bit more of a tricky part the cathode of this LED has a resistor here which has to go to the base of the transistor on the top up here to complete the cycle complete the loop so I just have it come down here and then I have it come to a jumper cable and I just picked red uh, just because I had that on hand so it just comes up and over and right down to the base and that actually completes our circuit it's really not uh, terribly complicated it's basically just three of the same circuit just uh, tied in together so before I plug it in again and make sure everything's wired up properly here you see there's this inverter circuit which means either the LEDs on or else the power gets diverted through the transistor and so if it's going through the LED here it comes to the base of this transistor which turns this transistor on and allows the current to go through the transistor instead of through this LED but then when this LED is off then no current will be coming through the uh, resistor here to the base so this transistor will be off which will allow this uh, this LED to turn on and then when this is on that will send a current through here to the base of this transistor which will mean the transistor will get the voltage instead of the LED turning it off but as I said before this was on to begin with so that's starting the cycle of on and offs and the capacitors slowing that process down it's uh, making things take longer as it charges and discharges and so that's how to look at this schematic so now while I plug this in I'll uh, show you that at the bottom of the diagram I had all the uh, the component uh, the uh, part number of the transistors the value of the capacitor and the resistors at the bottom of the diagram and basically all my diagrams are are on my website somewhere so if you like a diagram you should see it see it there so this is the first time I plugged this in uh, I just made this in the video and it's working just fine now so there's our uh, ring oscillator using three inverter circuits 
quickly before I go, if you notice I got a white jumper here and a transistor, they're not part of the circuit, if you're wondering, that's just kind of my spare part area, I forgot to remove them. And also, I have this blue and red wire there, that's so the red side of both sides get the same uh, positive voltage, and same with the uh, negative of both rails. They both get the same negative voltage, so uh, I didn't need to in this circuit, since I got positive on one side and negative all plugged in on the other side, but if I ever needed to use this negative rail, I could just plug the battery on that one, and the blue wire will bring negative to this side too.